Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Aaron Burr of the Free Thought Doctrine, and you're listening to another episode of the Aaron Burr Broadcast. So, coming off my last episode, a couple things I forgot to mention is what was the whole reason we even had the lockdowns in the first place, or at least so we were told. As I recall, it was the 15 days to slow the spread. 15 days to slow the spread, my ass. It's now, what, nine months to slow the spread? And remember, the whole reason to do this was to prevent hospitals from being overloaded, right? Because then they would be unable to give out care and treatment. They didn't want to overrun the hospitals. Well, except for a couple boroughs in New York, that never happened. Remember the naval hospital ships they sent to L.A. and New York? And that medical center they built with hundreds, if not a thousand beds in New York? All of which were never used. And one thing to remember is most hospitals are like 80 to 85% full capacity when it comes to the ICU beds because that is how they stay in business. All this is based on pseudoscience. Again, no scientific facts. And another thing to remember is the fact that the people who are pushing this on to the public do not have to worry about making ends meet because these people receive government checks. They are on the dole of the government, whether that be city, state, or federal. These politicians and bureaucrats are going to get paid regardless. They don't have to worry about trying to provide for their families because they will get paid regardless. So it's so easy for them to say it because it does not affect them personally at all. And look at teachers. These unions need to be dissolved. These teachers' unions are totally corrupt. The data shows that kids do not easily spread the disease to the teachers. And the teachers get paid whether they're at the school's or not. Whether they teach virtually or in person, they get paid the same. And another thing to remember is that when they shut down these schools and force kids to stay home through virtual learning or whatever means, but at home, that means that parents need to be available. Well, guess what? There's many households where the parents cannot make ends meet without both of them working or the single parent homes. Now these people are forced to stay home even if they could work just to make sure that someone is there for their kids to help facilitate their learning. What kind of logic is that? Also, another huge subject I left out from the last episode is the deaths from despair and all the abuse that has exponentially surged during this lockdown, whether it be child abuse, sexual abuse, spousal abuse, suicides have skyrocketed, heart attacks have skyrocketed, people have avoided going to the doctors out of fear to receive early detection of ailments that can be very deadly, and we'll see the effects of that in the coming years. Not to mention the fact that there's been furloughs and layoffs in hospitals across the country in the last several months because they're not receiving any patients. People are just too scared to show up. So now they're losing money anyways. And one thing I really didn't want to have to talk about, but I will mention, is nothing pisses me off more outside of the lockdowns than the idiotic, pathetic TikTok videos of nurses and medical practitioners or whatever dancing and having good time. Like you guys get to show up and go to work. We're supposed to sit here and bow down and call you heroes when there's people going out of business and losing their entire livelihoods and you get to sit there and make these videos and post online at these empty dead hospitals with you having a great time messing around being all cute yeah screw that no respect complete insult and now let's turn to the subject of this episode which is this politically evil insulting bill from this sorry excuse that we call congress what an absolute f you to the american people what a disgrace A disgustingly embarrassing disgrace. Billions in dollars in forward aid and pet projects were stuffed into a bill that only gives American citizens 600 lousy dollars. 600 dollars. What a slap in the face. And here's my overall stance in the first place is screw these stimulus bills. I am 100% against any stimulus bill because the real stimulus would be to open up the economies. Whether it be $600 or the now proposed $2,000 or the previous $1,200, if you are forcing people out of work in these blue cities and blue states, $600 or $2,000 isn't going to make the cut. They need to make a living. They need to be allowed to work, to run their businesses. Cash payouts? Are you, are you, are you serious? Not when 
billions of dollars are going to foreign aid and pet projects? I read one statistic about the first stimulus bill that so much money went to special interest and campaign donors while everybody got $1,200 a piece, right? But you could have taken that amount of money, the $2.3 trillion or whatever it was, divide that by the number of American households, which is, I read, about 110,000 families. That could amount to $20,000 a family. Now, if you say, okay, you got to shut down for two months and here's twenty grand, maybe a better situation. But what an insult. What an insult when, first of all, the bill is 5,593 pages long. And this is not the first time this has happened where a bill that is ridiculously long and they only have a small number of hours or time to even read it and vote on it. This happened with Obamacare with Nancy Pelosi saying, well, you have to pass the bill first, then you can see what's in it. That's total BS. But here we go again for a $2.3 trillion bill with more than $900 billion being allocated for coronavirus assistance. A bill that that includes so much foreign aid, $10 million for gender programs in Pakistan, and $2.5 million for internet freedom, quote unquote, $15 billion earmarked toward grant programs for live entertainment venues such as Broadway, when they could just open up and, you know, make money the, the normal way, $500 million earmarked for Israeli defense purchases, $250 million for Palestinian economic aid, $700 million to Sudan, $1.3 billion to Egypt, $85.5 million to Cambodia, $135 million to Nepal, $33 million to Venezuela, and $453 million to Ukraine. What kind of absolute BS is this? I, for one, my position on foreign aid has always been zero dollars to all these countries and to all countries. America is Santa now, I guess, just in time for Christmas. Combine this with $600 for each American, many of which will go to people who don't need it, by the way. This is the devil's work. Now, Trump did come out last night and say that he wants to raise the relief to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. And he mentioned that the bill needs to be amended to get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary spending and that he would veto this bill if not. And he did list, as I'm glad he did, a lot of these spending measures, including the $1.3 billion to Egypt that they'll just turn around and buy weapons from Russia. I hope he vetoes the bill. And now you have Nancy Pelosi sitting there. Oh, I agree with Trump about $2,000. Sure, of course she's gonna say that. But she's not mentioned anything about cutting all the pork barrel spending and foreign aid such an insult to the american people i'm glad trump's out there speaking out but in the event that we no longer have him in office just just remember the new administration will only make this kind of thing worse so in conclusion the lockdowns are total bs based on non-science pseudoscience it's more about politics and virtue signaling and that the people perpetuating this on the, to the public do not even have to worry about getting paid because they're doing just fine on the government dole and that this stimulus bill this quote-unquote covid relief bill is a slap in the face of every single american is an f you to the citizens of this country and that the real stimulus bill would be to open up the damn cities and states congress should be putting pressure on these mayors, governors, county officials to open up, open up. That's the real stimulus bill. This bill is a work of the devil. And you've been listening to the Aaron Bird broadcast on the Free Thought Doctrine.